The whole audience. Can you give me something? Zahar. You know, the uh, last panel in a conference like this is traditionally considered to be a position of great honor. Um, it's, uh, it's not really called a keynote, kind of like a last note, so to speak. And uh, I had to fight hard to get it, but I got it. And uh, we wanted to go out with a bang. So we have something very exciting here for you, which is, as much as I, I know we all enjoyed uh, hearing about venture capital investing, and it is exciting, and I have the pleasure to work with Roman uh, on uh, ICU's uh, venture capital uh, activities right now. It is even more exciting to listen to people who are starting companies, who are out there in the trenches, who have big dreams, but aren't just lying in bed, but are out there making those dreams a reality. And I think when you talk to these people and you listen to them, what you're gonna find is young people, full of energy, confident, willing to take models. They're competing internationally. And despite their youth, I would say they have wisdom, wisdom to share with all of us. And today we've asked them to tell their story and to share some of that wisdom that they've, uh, that they've earned at, at what is in some cases, uh, by my standards, uh, quite a, uh, a young age. So we'd like to start uh, by inviting Yaroslav Ajnuk from Pet Cube. How did I do? To present. All right, thanks so much. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I hope this will not be the last note, this will be the first note of, of something new. Um, and I really enjoyed being here in the forum. Um, thank you so much for uh, staying here till the end. Um, and you know, one thing that struck me is uh, most of the conversations were so much around how do, we, how do we catch up? How do we stay at the status quo? How do we don't miss out? I think the conversation should be about how do we break out? How do we get the world leadership in something? And um, I really think we need more ambition. And um, I'm gonna talk about these things. I'm gonna share a story of, uh, of what we're doing with PetCube. And then, uh, I'm gonna share my understanding of um, what is a blueprint for building a successful technology company out of Ukraine. So PetCube. What we do, we have invented the world's first uh, pet camera. We in fact have two pet cameras now, PetCube Bytes, a camera that allows you to see your pet, talk to your pet, and treat them with, uh, with treats. And PetCube Play, a camera with a laser pointer, that allows you to play with your cat or dog remotely. Uh, this company, we've sold over 200,000 cameras so far, mainly on the American market. We're making tens of millions of dollars in revenue. And um, it's almost 200% year-over-year growth over the last four years. So that was a company started in Ukraine. And I'm going to show you a short video about PetCube with my commentary. So it gives you a better clue of what the company is. So. This is our mobile app, and I apologize. Can we have uh, can we have sound connected to the presentation? Not sure if we can. Maybe we'll give them a couple seconds, and if they can manage it, that will be great. If not, you will be listening to me, which is also not that bad. Let's be fair, okay? Thank you, thank you. Everyone who laughs, I immediately like that person by default. Okay, so this is the video. Um, about PetCube. Um, you can do louder. So this is our mobile app. Our mobile app does not only allow you to see your pets from your PetCube, it is also like Instagram for pets with photos and videos, and people share their cameras as well. So you can play with someone else's cats. These are cats in a pet shelter. You can play with them. You can adopt one of those cats. You share all of that on Facebook, on Instagram. There are a number of services built into that platform like dog walking or insurance. This girl is playing with her cat through Peck You Play. She moves a laser, cats loves that. Dogs love it too. You can talk through your Peck Cube. Uh, you can see what's going on, even if it's nighttime. And obviously this is Peck You Bites. You can treat your dog. Works like that. Dogs enjoy it a lot, people enjoy it too. 
Okay, this is Pet Cube. Do you like that? Okay, thank you. So the company was built almost entirely in Ukraine, engineered. Even this video was produced in Ukraine. Actually, you can produce a video like that for maybe one-tenth of a cost it would cost you in the United States. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, well, we're number one best-selling pet camera. We started uh, four years ago with a uh, PayCube camera, uh, then later PayCube Play, uh, our second generation device. Then last year we launched PayCube Bytes, the treat dispenser, and our uh, cloud service called PayCube Care, uh, which uh, brings us recurring revenue with uh, monthly payments. This year we're uh, launching behavioral diagnostics, we're launching a platform with other services around PayCubes, and we're about to launch some new hardware. Um, so we're selling an Amazon, Best Buy, Petco, Bed Bath Beyond, Macy's, SoftBank in Japan, some of the world's lar largest retailers. 88% sales coming from the United States, it's over 3,000 retail locations, and it's over 18 countries currently. So this is PayCube. Um, our customers um, are quite attached to their devices. 80% uh, of people who bought their device keep using it after a year. This is a better number than a GoPro or Fitbit can show. This is a better number than any home camera can show you. Why? Because pet cubes are like iPhones for pets. Exactly. People talk to their pets. In fact, they talk to their pets 50 minutes uh, per week, in average. This is more than average person talks to their parents on the phone. Like, think about it. They talk more to their cats than they talk to their parents. Okay? Can it be re even better? Uh, we were recognized by such media as Wall Street Journal, Wired, CNBC, and many others. Uh, recently, we won the Red Dot Design Award, which is like Oscars in the world of technology design. Finally, Emma Watson said that PayCube is her favorite app, and it is life-changing. In addition to that, we raised over $14 million in financing from both Ukrainian and American investors. Uh, including such names as Aventures, Almaz, who were here before me on the stage, the famous American incubator Y Combinator, and many others. Can it be even better? Well, actually, yes. So we have struck partnership with companies like Mars, a $17 billion company, well, $17 billion revenue last year, the leader in pet food market. Uh, companies like Wellness, another billion dollar pet food leader, uh, Rover for dog walking, um, Amazon for audiobooks for, about dogs. Finally, Trupanion, the leading dog insurance provider. So people who own pet cubes, they uh, get discounts to the services of these companies that have joined our pet cube platform. In addition to that, we have Caesar Milan, who's a worldwide celebrity uh, dog whisperer. Uh, who has four shows on National Geographic and is widely recognized across the United States. And uh, we have partnered with The Secret Life of Pets with Universal, a uh, super famous movie uh, about the secret life of pets, obviously, that you can see through your pet cube. And we're adding more and more partners every month. So this all is about pet cube, a company started and built out of Ukraine. Can it get even better? Yes. So today I want to share with you something that we're building and we'll be launching soon that we call behavioral diagnostics. Since we are the biggest pet camera manufacturer in the world, uh, we see streams of video for what pets do day and night from all of these hundreds of thousands and millions of cameras. So we can analyze those videos to understand the pet behavior and in fact, kind of understand pet language. So let's watch this concept video. We call it pet behavior, and it starts with what we call a pet selfie. Whenever your pet near the camera, we can recognize its face. We notify you that your pet is calling you. So if you're in a busy meeting, you're like, wait a second, my dog is calling you, I have to, I have to chat. Wait a minute, okay? And it looks like that, you can, you can see your pet, you can talk to them, maybe they can respond back to you. You know, you, you can have a meaningful conversation, then you can treat them. And our technology, uh, using artificial intelligence, can recognize different, um, different patterns in your pet behavior. And then by analyzing those patterns over time, we're able to say if your dog is getting sick 
we're able to say if you need any special training or anything else. This is the demo of how the actual technology works and how we are detecting some of these patterns. So again, this all is being developed in Ukraine by a relatively uh, small team with a relatively modest financing. So our mission statement is to connect pets to the internet and give them a voice. This is a mission that goes forward to dozens of years. We even have meeting rooms in our offices named by famous scientists who have contributed to humanity's understanding of animals. And that's an aspiration that PetCube team has. Yeah, it's going to work like that. Um, so this all started six years ago, just six years ago, with a device that looked like that. Would you invest in that? Is there anyone in the audience who would invest in that? There's no one, right? So we as founders, we recognize there is this huge opportunity to bring pets into the digital world. And we started this. Alex is my co-founder and uh, our CTO, original inventor of PetCube. This is his dog, Rocky. And this device was created because Alex wanted to watch Rocky when he was out of home. So, you know, most of the great ideas, they start from a personal pain point. And this is exactly how PetCube got started. These are three founders, um, all Ukrainians, all uh, lived in Kiev, met each other, were friends, started this company. Currently, it's 70 people team. Uh, we're dispersed between San Francisco, where the headquarters is, Kiev, where we have over 50 and uh, our team of engineers, marketers, designers, uh, finance people, and so on, and Shenzhen in China, where we have four people working on manufacturing. So you can say the sun never sets. Uh, it's kind of corny. Um, anyhow, we, we, we managed to um, gather a, a remarkable team of, of world's top professionals. Uh, to the left, you can see the founders. To the right, you can see some, uh, some of the executives. For example, Chris worked at uh, Pepsi and L'Oreal. Vivian was with Sony and Electronic Arts. Um, Mike Tamer, our CFO, uh, was a CFO at Jawbone, a billion dollar company. Um, Saldi joined us recently from Amazon, Dolby, and Netflix. Uh, Alex Davidenko is an amazing talent out of Ukraine, is our VP of operations. Um, and finally, Mishko, a founder of the company we acquired a year ago that leads our artificial intelligence efforts. It is so important to have a clear vision and strategy that is captivating so that the best people in the world, they can choose to work you not because you pay the most, not because they expect you to sell for four billion dollars, but because they are motivated by something you're willing to create. But it has not to only be PetCube uh, that that creates this new industry in the world and creates globally successful product out of Ukraine. I believe we need to have hundreds of companies like that, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are going to build the next 100 globally disruptive companies out of Ukraine. So this is, this is a blueprint how I see it. And first, why would you ever start a global enterprise, global, global business? It's so risky, right? We were talking so much about Ukraine today. Well, a couple reasons. First, it's incredibly important for uh, the national defense, right? There are people who are fighting on the border who are protecting Ukraine. But people who have their skills in entrepreneurship, technology, finance, they have their own duty to be on economic front. So building the company that makes world care more about Ukraine is actually a great thing you can do for Ukrainian defense. The next thing, we gotta build a new role model for society. Let's, let's, let's call it what it is. Most people in Ukraine are still inspired by corrupt politicians corrupt lawmakers. Those are the role models. People see them uh, riding fancy cars and they think, okay, that's, that's how success looks like. No, that's not how it looks like. And we need a new role model of entrepreneurs who didn't steal, who didn't privatize a factory, who built some value for the world, and that's how they got successful, that's how they found meaning in life, that's how they got their respect. That's how they got their wealth. The more entrepreneurs like that are around, the more people will be able to recognize that. 
Finally, of course, entrepreneurship is, is an amazing fuel for the economy. That's, that's value creation at its best, and that's innovation at, at its best. So what I firmly believe in is that Ukraine today is one of the world's best places to start a technology company. And I will prove you why. It's not just brava bravado. It's, it, it is a fact, that's what I believe. First, we are, well, one of a few company, well, one of the few countries in the world that can build an aer airplane. Why? Because airplane demands wide expertise in big range of areas. So Ukraine has really wi wide field of specialists, right? Not that many countries have such a wide field of specialists. We should leverage that. The second, we have really low labor costs. In fact, Ukraine has probably one of the cheapest in the world costs of educated labor, uh, if not that cheapest, combined with this wide range of specialists. And the third one, the third one is really important. Ukraine now has a generation of people who really want to prove themselves. These are were people that were born after Ukraine got independence. Uh, the nation that didn't have its sovereignty for over 300 years, now all that energy that was accumulated tries to get out. We saw three revolutions in 30 years, and that is a manifestation of that energy that Ukrainians have. If you combine these three things, the wide range of specialists, the low cost of labor on the world standards, and the passion, this is a unique place in the world. And these are exactly the ingredients you need to build a successful, globally successful, innovative business, right? So which company should we build? First, firmly believe that companies should be mega projects. You should not aim something small. It should be ambitious. Why? Because the competition is not for capital. There is plenty of capital in the world if you have globally competitive ideas. The competition is for the best talent, and the best talent goes where the ambition is. The best talent wants to work on projects that they want to see in the world. And these are the projects you need to start in Ukraine, and these are the projects you need to fund in Ukraine. Second, use those strategic advantages that I just mentioned. If you start a mega project, for example, a new automobile company out of Ukraine, or a new aerospace enterprise, that involves thousands of highly educated Ukrainians. That's how you leverage that advantage. Because for building one factory of you, well, for the money you can use to build one factory in Silicon Valley, you can build five, maybe 10 factories in Ukraine and try competing with us when we are moving at that pace. The third is obviously need to target global markets, including because global markets means global level of quality, um, and it also means global revenues. Ukraine is not big enough. We're not China, we're not the US. So what are the examples of companies that could be built like that? Heavy industries, everything that deals with rocketry, um, aerospace, um, trains, uh, cars, anything like that. Manufacturing, manufacturing is getting reinvented. The way plants and factories are working will be changed completely over the next 50 years. Current designs for factories were designed literally 100 years ago. This is all getting robotized, this is all get, getting full of sensors and reimagined um, using the learnings people got with modern software. Agriculture technology, not just agriculture, but agriculture technology has an opportunity to increase yields by, by the factor of 10. This is a huge opportunity, but we cannot land and wait until someone else comes here with their technology and creates all the value for that. Entertainment, I believe creativity is so much underappreciated in Ukraine we can build globally competitive creative projects. And I think those will be created over the next 10 years. Furniture, textile, pharma, there are so many industries that are waiting to be disrupted. All of them will be changed a lot globally around the world 
because software is the world. Software is the world. We can see that very vividly on example of so many companies around the world, so many industries, and that will happen to all of these industries. Finally, learning and education. It is ridiculous how underlooked this area is. We invest so much in machine learning, yet human learning gets so little attention. There is an opportunity to disrupt the way people learn globally. And there is nothing that stops us in Ukraine from, from building those kind of projects. So it wouldn't be fair if I didn't talk about barriers. There are definitely barriers. There are. I see the three, three big barriers. First is geopolitical risks. But let's be real. Um, America has geopolitical risks with uh, this guy in North Korea, right? The whole world has those risks. Um, Israel has many geopolitical risks, okay? Um, all the world has geopolitical risks with earthquakes, tornadoes, uh, tsunamis, and so on. So, I mean, the world has learned how to deal with that. So, let's be realist. It's not that bad as sometimes people paint it. Corruption risks, internal risks. Yeah, you can, you can obviously run away and hide and cry and say, oh my gosh, Ukraine is so corrupt, I cannot do anything, right? But that's a position of a loser. The position of someone who wants to create something is figure out how you can deal with that. And you can deal with that. You can deal with that, bring some Western investors, bring maybe some Ukrainian investors on board, uh, figuring out how to navigate that field while obviously helping and emphasizing how important it is to fight corruption in this country. Finally, I think one of the biggest risks is management. That is uh, often underappreciated. Unfortunately, and I tend to blame communism, um, we do not have a lot of good managers in this country because the market economy is still very young in this country. So what do we do? Well, I think we should invite managers from those places that, that have great managers, and that's what we're doing at TechU. So I want to quote my favorite Ukrainian engineer and constructor, Sergei Korolev, who supposedly said that one who wants to work looks for opportunities. The one who doesn't looks for reasons. Let's look for opportunities. Finally, I believe that Ukraine will create a hundred globally successful companies that will be worth over $1 billion over the next 15 years. There is no way to stop it, in fact. So you better join it, okay? And here's how you can join it. Government. I think, actually, your main function might not be in lawmaking or regulation or creating a great platform. All of that is important. But the one thing you overlook is how important the leadership is. I'm not seeing any leadership from the government in terms of, hey, Ukrainian creative class, all the passionate people, please go and create big companies. We will try to support you with whatever we can, whatever we can figure out. So government, please have some leadership and give some inspiration and give some signs to those people that this is one of the priorities. Second, investors. Investors, there are right here in Ukraine now. Start creating vehicles that will be capable of investing in these early stage companies. Don't just focus on those large chunk chunks in steel and agriculture and whatever we have in Ukraine. Foreign investors, uh, I do recommend you to invest now while it is still not that expensive. It will be more expensive next year, next year, next year. Finally, media. Please, please, show that the glass is half full and have some optimism in your reporting. Don't just report all the trash that is happening. So, with that said, I'll, give you with, I'll leave you with this one, one last message. Um, you should invest in Ukraine now. Thank you. Thank you, Yaroslav. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Oleg Naumenko, uh, who is uh, already a serial entrepreneur and will tell about uh, his story to date uh, and his new uh, company, Heidi's. Thanks. 
So, hello. In my presentation. Wow, something not good. Okay, uh, I tried to tell uh, about my previous and current experience. I'm Alek Nauminka. I was one of the co-founder company called Pocketbook. And currently uh, we provide a new solution in cybersecurity area. It's product name uh, Hydris. So, uh, in my previous experience, I started from one world, why? Why I could uh, make something new? Because I don't uh, think about money, I didn't think about ambition, I think about technology which can change the world, and my also pain point, because I want to read more, and read more convenient for me. So, uh, idea was uh, from my previous work, uh, I was on uh, chief of marketing office in the distribution company which provides a big printing machine in Ukraine. And one of the, my tasks was uh, thinking about next step. What kind of printing machine will be, what kind of technology in printing area will be in the market, and what can we manage and provide new on the market. And uh, we thought about e-book readers and how we can manage it. Uh, because we don't have a good opportunity and uh, experience in the electronic area, but we started it. So, printing industry is a very interesting industry because uh, I have a family from printing. Uh, we have a lot of books in my home. I read uh, many books in my younger And uh, we start analysis of what we can do and how uh, we uh, adjust it current technology in the printing industry. So, uh, one of the big issue in 2007, it's uh, we have only two competitors on the market. It was a company called Sony and uh, Amazon Kindle. But also these uh, two devices uh, need to convert a different uh, file uh, to some format to read in the books. It's not convenient way and our main uh, Point, it's a universal device for read any format without convertation. So we started from 200,000K. It's not a big money, but it was enough for starting a global uh, solution. Currently, Pocketbook sold these uh, devices in 24 countries in the world. A very have successful story, uh, also in Germany, France, and other European countries. So, the team. Uh, I have uh, two guys in my current team, which I started working 2007 and worked together even this day. And one of my uh, core team, which provides a new development, which provides a new technology and very smart guys, with very specific guys because they are programmer, IT guys. But I like it and I think a team is most uh, successful uh, parameters for the startups after the idea. So, uh, production. Uh, in my first experience, we make a first product in Taiwanese because uh, we have a good connection with a company called PVI, which provides technology, electronics, books, uh, paper. And uh, we uh, have a recommendation for start first production page in Taiwanese company. It was very hard because we don't want how it works, uh, how we can control it, how we can manage this risk, and what can we do uh, if uh, some but uh, we do it, uh, we have a quality control, uh, we provide our core technology, it's a firmware for our devices, it's um, our most uh, development teams, and uh, market and goals. Uh, from the first day in the pocketbook, we're thinking and globally. We're thinking from a local market, CS market, European market, and global market. Uh, we just want to make 1% uh, of the global market which people read the books. It's very huge uh, numbers, but you already got it and pocket books also grow it today also. So my first deal, it was in Moscow. My first order uh, it was a metro station in the cash. It's uh, very fun, but not fun for me in this time. Uh, it, but it was uh, 208 and uh, very fun story, uh, but after this, uh, we take a lot of pre-orders from different country, also from uh, Brazil, India, and other. 
So sales, uh, one of the big uh, secrets in Pocketbook, uh, we use a partnership like a most uh, faster way for go to the market. Because uh, if we sell uh, our own device by own, it's very f longer, it's very hard for us. But uh, we make a partnership with existing company which already have a sales channel on different geo and we provide a good margin for them and uh, they uh, make uh, more money on the, our device and want to sell pocketbook each other device. Advertising. Uh, it's very hard task for us in this day because we don't have a lot of money for make a huge advertising company, but we have one idea. This idea is was community. Uh, we make a lot of meetings with existing people who like to uh, read uh, paper books and uh, spend our time and mind uh, how we can make the uh, best e-book readers on the world, uh, what kind of idea people provide for us. We try to uh, realize in, in our product and make our product best and best each year. Uh, growth is a very also interesting task for us because uh, our uh, previous experience, uh, we grow our uh, production case from 1K in months to 1 million per year. 1 million device, uh, it's very interesting uh, case because uh, existing company which we start production in Taiwanese it's don't make this quantity and uh, we need to move our production to China and start working with a big company, it's called Foxconn, it's one of the biggest companies which provide Apple solution and other. Uh, one million devices per year is also very hard because uh, big company have a big uh, task and big issues in the production stage. You need control and manage all this. And our three guys from Ukraine, uh, we uh, move to and ship to China to control a big uh, manufacturer. It's very hard because Chinese people are very smart and they very well know what can they do. But uh, in our case, uh, we know uh, more about our products and how we can work and how we can control uh, what is the uh, need in the main in our product. So, uh, I also have experience for sold uh, our business. Uh, two, four years ago, I sold my part in Pocketbook. It's very interesting time because uh, this time Pocketbook was very uh, grow on the market and we have a good opportunity to sell our part. Uh, but uh, one of the biggest uh, value which I take from Pocketbook is my team. Big part of my team which I start Pocketbook today also work with me. Uh, so, today uh, we developed a strong security solution which provides a convenient and security way for digital and physical identity. It's also my uh, personal pain point because when I sold my part in Pocketbook, I have a lot of security issue. I also, uh, store, uh, also uh, have issue with my bank account and I have a lot of conversation with bank for uh, make this money for the bank, but today we provide a high disk key, it's universal uh, technology for physical and digital access, for financial sector, for blame, for car, uh, for a lawyer company, uh, which uh, consolidate a different identity. It's also a two-factor authentication, cryptocurrency uh, private key, and uh, crypto resistant password for each service in the internet. So, uh, thanks. Uh, I just want to tell you about our promo code. You can buy this. Thanks. Thank you very much, Oleg. Uh, our next uh, speaker is the CEO and founder of a company that would have sounded like something out of science fiction even 10 years ago, a community of hackers who are out there protecting us out there on the edges, I give you uh, Dimitri uh, Budoran. Uh, hello, hello, thanks. Okay, I want to start with a joke. Uh, so, uh, can you raise a hand uh, who uh, has was ever been hacked? Okay, we got few people here, so maybe you're not so important because everything and everybody can be hacked. All right, so. Um, 
I will uh, mix some funny stories with like some technical stuff, but generally I will speak shortly about me, then I will speak about what is hacking today, then how it started, ups and downs, and some plans and when moon, of course. So me personally, I'm also one of you guys. I'm a financial guy, accountant. I was working eight years at Deloitte. I passed ACCA. Whoever passed ACCA, I think uh, you know we're a big family. Uh, I, I was working afterwards in a company called Ukro Brom Prom that was crazy years, thanks God I left. But we managed to build a team there and this team is uh, currently with me here in Odessa. Uh, so what is hacking? Hacking is a pyramid. Of course yes and of course not. Pyramid why? Because we uh, being in a crypto world and blockchain world we have a chance to structure entities not in traditional way so we do not like kindly uh, please investors don't listen to this we don't focus on uh, uh, dividends we focus on the community and community growth so we focus number one on the community of hackers of white hat hackers or gray hat ha hackers and the more hackers we have the stronger they are we believe the stronger uh, we are so this is the oops number one layer Second layer is our community of supporters. Because we, we are in crypto, we have supporters all over the world. When we had an ICO, it was like 150 countries who contributed. So they are still with us. They still promote us everywhere. And we got a lot of clients just from just being in the crypto space and having these people around us. Then, of course, is our core team. After that, I put clients. Why put clients so low? Because they are benefiting from our super high quality services. So they, everything, again, everything can be hacked. Every day we're hacking exchanges, we're hacking wallets, and this is just like whoever worked with us, they just benefit. And then, of course, hacking products. So uh, we have already quite a lot of things in our uh, ecosystem. Because, like, w generally we position ourselves as a cybersecurity consulting company. So we position ourselves as the uh, group of uh, highly talented uh, young engineers from Ukraine that uh, are in the, uh, on the border with Russia. We have cyber wars all the time. We got all the uh, new skills, but what, what it actually is. But, uh, and being in Ukraine, we actually have the connection to all major universities, to a lot of cybersecurity experts. So in, uh, in Haken, people are working uh, from all the regions, from Odessa, Kharkiv, uh, Kiev, uh, Lviv, uh, Vinnytsia, and we, we uh, focus on getting the best talents. So number one is Haken Proof, is the, our main product is where uh, hackers meet the product companies. This is where the product company places their product and hackers start to attack and give the report with found vulnerabilities. Uh, then three layers is Hackit Conference. We do f uh, it's a fourth year. We, uh, we organize conferences where we bring hackers, uh, the best ones, uh, hackers from all over the world, and we do it, uh, we do educational stuff. Uh, then it's cybersecurity consulting. Uh, basically, three main uh, 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 three main services is smart contract or it's network security and GDPR compliance and anti-phishing service and fraud investigation. Being in crypto is like being in the wild west. So many uh, fraud scams are happening every day and we, we kind of uh, see uh, that uh, we need to act as a trusted uh, company who is preventing these frauds, who is speaking about these frauds and particularly on the crypto exchanges. Crypto exchanges is, the, is a nightmare right now. So, yeah, an, a little bit of basic information. Bug bounty markets, 100 million uh, last year, 1 billion in the next few years. We, we think we can get a share of 10. Penetration, we are right now in like maybe second layer of bug bounty platforms, but for sure we are one of the most uh, famous in Europe. Penetration test, 3.4 billion market, cybersecurity consultant, 53.1 billion market. We, we focus on getting 30 million very soon. Smart contract code is just started. Uh, last year it was 30 million, and this year, and uh, we are uh, focusing to uh, get 3 million. And this year we already did uh, for nine months it's around 300k just on smart contract codes. And this is crypto exchange ranks. Uh, too many numbers for this time of the day. So how it started? So 
I was uh, 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 I was um, um, always I was always upset that I I was winning math Olympics all the time at school, but for some reason I went to economics, not to KPI for programming. So I was always uh, trying to get back to you know to the roots, and uh, cybersecurity was always the thing that I wanted to do, and which I actually started to do at Deloitte already. But yeah, uh, so in 2017, 27th of June, uh, does anybody remember what was this day? So it was uh, virus Peter. So and at that particular day, I was meeting one of crypto influencers just for tea. We had a three hours conversation. He was telling me all about ICO crypto stuff, and my phone was just blowing because I was receiving so many messages like Peter hit this, Peter hit that. Oh my god! Oh my god! And for, uh, uh, it was momentum day. And the next uh, the next day, we were already with our team. At the uh, uh, at Antonov, I'm sorry, Antonov, but uh, and we were proposing them to fix their problems for free because we were part of Fukurobron Prom. And guess what? Their uh, their security guys say, "No, thank you. We don't need your free stuff. We better buy some equipment." Okay, whatever. So at that day, I decided like I need to leave Fukurobron Prom and I need to start our own company. And yes. Uh, I see the chance. I see the chance for young Ukrainians. Let's do it. So, 30th of June, uh, I gathered people and uh, I started to explain them what is ICO. They were proposing, oh, no, no, let's don't involve cybersecurity. Let's do some porn, uh, porn rooms. That will be much better ICO, much more hype. And, okay, uh, I hope I'm thankful that we didn't do it. But at 12th of July, already I took my 11k savings. And I put it in the company so that I don't have another, you know, way back. And 10th of August, just in less than one month, we already got our white paper ready. Uh, 13th of September, again in one month, we already won our first uh, prize, uh, 33 bitcoins, crazy money. And then we launched the the whole company. That was that was DTNE conference. And 30th of September, we got our event in Mria. We 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 were trying to do some hype, uh, you know, like to show everything to the people, to to the crowd about Ukraine. So we organized our events, our hacket events, the final in uh, the the airplane Maria to Antonov N225. Uh, the hackers that we invited, the hack, hackers uh, hackathon, uh, they were amazed. They actually did this young one. Uh, uh, in front of me, he is 17 years old. He uh, became famous when he hacked uh, Pentagon. Uh, there is some old guy, uh, Apple Crate, uh, on the right. So we got a lot of fun. Actually, we didn't raise much because we are not marketing guys. We're just, uh, you know, some mathematicians. And we're, but we raised 5.4 k Ether and 250 BTC. Uh, the whole budget was around uh, half million. And we got like around 2.2 investors. Yes, we did get some money from RF, but they all gone already. I mean, like uh, not our investors anymore. And yeah, and total emission was 5.6 million of hackings per one USD. Yeah, immediately it was December. We finished ICO. I took my team for the surfing camp in Sri Lanka. We thought the life is so great. One ether is 1.2 k. One BTC 19.5. Hacking was five USD. We we jumped like we made X5 for our investors. Um, as I said, bonus was a trip to Sri Lanka. And but yeah, the 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 phrase that everyone is keep saying to me, not the bullet fix it. And that was of course very painful. And that was my main, you know, like my it's still my main pain. Yeah, we 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 didn't fix money in USD and we suffered from all this market crash and and yeah yeah right now ether is around 200 bucks and that would be painful if we did not focus on some main things okay so so first of all uh, in January uh, when we finished all our vacations we were we started to focus on revenue so we hired quite uh, experienced uh, sales guys 
who started to be our business developers and they uh, they immediately started from 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 the beginning first uh, month january was already like 40k uh, revenue and uh, we did not expect that it can be uh, it can go so well so and then with uh, these uh, five factors i immediately went to asia road show uh, to china to korea uh, japan and i started to find the partners who start who helped me to sell the services and actually uh, Chinese guys, they like when some white uh, boys uh, sell them something, sell them some cybersecurity, and they're very rich, and they eager to pay uh, money, and they love to have some international, they consider us as international audit firm, uh, confirming their, uh, uh, their code. Uh, tight work with community, yeah. Uh, I'm speaking with my community every week, I'm making videos, uh, we are all the time uh, communicating. My Telegram is the complete mess I'm receiving like uh, uh, I don't know maybe 10 15 messages every minute uh, but like what to do this is uh, this is a new way how you work youtubers it's actually amazing but it works people say right now ha huh, I don't watch TV I'm so cool but in fact nothing changed people uh, young my generation they watch YouTube they watch YouTube a lot. They trust uh, YouTubers, influencers, which is obviously like uh, good for us as for marketing, but nothing changes. And tech PR, yeah, we started to do a lot of research as we focus on quality materials that we should not promote in the, um, uh, to, to the media that they uh, publish them on their own. Key challenges uh, that we face during winter, it's, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, crypto is all, uh, we have uh, one side of business that is just a regular business and another side is uh, the price of the token. Community all the time demands when Binance, when exchanges, when Moon, and we have to uh, for, uh, reply to them something, but like what to do. New young team, um, in average my, um, the, the, the Hacker uh, best career, like he's on the peak of his career at 24, and my uh, the whole my team is very young, and I have to put managers uh, on the uh, unexperienced people. Some did well, some did great, but of course uh, some uh, did not so as I expected. But yeah, that that is still a challenge to be honest. ERC20 not utility, don't even bother about it. Ukrainian mentality. Uh, I think we are, um, we don't have a lot of dreamers. I think we don't believe in ourselves uh, when it's needed. I'm absolutely sure Hacken will be a global company with huge amount of customers and we're all gonna sit in Ukraine and providing service and there is no need to move to Shanghai or uh, San Francisco. Uh, but people sometimes don't believe in it and I think this is what the government should say that, uh, guys, we have this chance. Skeptic teams from traditional companies, no one knows what to do. Ah, no one knows what to do is great, you know. Like we just, uh, we, 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 we are no, uh, basically we came from nowhere and what to do, no one knows. That was, that is still an issue, but it's fun issues, nice trip. And uh, yeah, and then some data. This is the head count. We are already 65. So you see that uh, the green one is tech, red is marketing, uh, blue admin, uh, yellow legal, sales, and, and sales is crypto exchange ranks. So you can see that uh, tech is more than marketing, which is good. <laughs> um, then it's revenue. So right now, uh, this is information for nine months. Uh, our last month was 160K USD and previous, and, uh, uh, July was also above 150k, uh, which is good, and uh, mostly smart contract audits. Then you see anti-phishing, bug bounty, pen test, and you see that penetration test is rising more and more. Uh, this is because we uh, have proven our skills. We have already a set of uh, reports that we provide to our potential new customers that we already did, and now it's more easy to get the clients. Um, <clears throat> and also a, a good thing about smart contract audits, it's a very new niche 
and we were able to get immediately to the top uh, companies and right now we are in the uh, middle of this uh, uh, this fear and we are participating in creation of smart contract audit auditors association and methodology uh, and this is our revenue uh, analysis so you can see it's like very distributed uh, that's a lot because of the uh, marketing tools a lot because of Facebook a lot of because of conferences and but yeah like you can see North America maybe a little bit better than EU but Asia is still very good well, Singapore is mostly Chinese companies of course uh, and yeah from the beginning of the year we did 86 clients on more than 120 projects uh, I can say that we are already the biggest cybersecurity service exporter uh, in Ukraine. Uh, these names probably don't tell you anything because you're not in crypto, but believe me, this is big. We got the biggest ICO, the biggest Indian client, the biggest uh, Middle East client, uh, and uh, people know us in crypto world. And yeah, this we moved to Paro Surface. You're very welcome to. I'll come and see that we are real people. This is just part of the team. It's my birthday. And, uh, and future plans. Um, we, 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 are, uh, I, we have the chance, you know, to... Uh, my, my, uh, how I rule the company, I put a lot of belief in the people, in my young managers. I, put, I transfer my energy to them. And we start a lot of, you know, directions. Um, and... Maybe if only 30%, 40% of they worked, it's, it's still great. And yeah, we're going to start the YouTube channel. We're going to start the yeah, methodology and association creation has already been done. We have the, uh, I don't know, uh, not on this slide. We're going to start, uh, and that's already set up, the cybersecurity school uh, together with the Unit Factory, Unit City. And yeah. In crypto, a lot of uh, crazy stuff also you can do. Uh, so the best way to be protected is hackers on your site. I get some tips. No, 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 some tips. So also I want to invite you to our conference this year. It's uh, 9 to uh, 11 October uh, in Kiev. That will, there will be like around 60, 80 hackers all over the world. And that will be like just if you have a CTO, Send him there, and that will be upgrade your CTO campaign. Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much, Tima. Okay, now it wouldn't be fair not to have a, a, a local startup. So we have here uh, Alexander Starovit from Quambio, who's going to tell us all about ceramic 3D printing. Good evening. Good evening, my name is Alexander Starovit and I'm working in the startup of Quambio. I'm responsible for the operational activity as we are producing the 3D objects printed at, on the printer and all of that is focused upon ceramics. So we are accompanying our clients from the birth of the idea till the ready product issue. We came to ceramics only two years ago. We began all of that in 2013 as a project as a platform for the owners of the tabletop uh, 3D printers. It used to be a hype and there was a huge interest for the table 3D printing. We suggested to have a platform to choose the designer project to push the button print and to get this product at your table at home. This platform allowed to transform a very complicated pro object into the usual utilities device which was working according to the principle plug and play. We loved that, we loved the technology and it seemed to be the best product in the world and only, but our users could not value that because there were not enough of 3D printers for the scheme of paper print work. So we had to change something. So we came to the conclusion that the table printers do not allow us to get the ready product. They are more dealing with the manufacturing of certain prototypes 
prototypes, so we began to take orders of different materials. There were lots of materials in ceramics, orders in ceramics, and there was no such an offer, a nice uh, uh, supply which would suggest the ready products. We decided to take this challenge because we needed to save this product, because this platform turned out not to be efficient. A bit of history. For 25,000 years, the ceramics manufacturing was the same. The process, in fact, never changed during this time. The ceramics has been used not only as an object for design and also as the equipment for the industry and heavy industries. We have developed the technology which allows to produce ceramics with the help of 3D printer, and it was done in the following way. Our engineer took the, uh, uh, the powder in the bucket, and he decided to make a product, but he didn't write down the components, so we had to spend some time to get to know what the components were. We never did that, but during this work we, decide, we designed two, three new powders which give us the production of products in the heavy industries, healthcare and we also printing bone implants. So, the multi-million, multi-billion market of the ceramic production is increasing, so we are growing together with it. If we look closer at the traditional cycle of production, we will understand why we use for ceramics and can get this product in a different way, in fact, but we use 3D printing because of the very simple reason, because in the traditional cycle of getting one prototype from the idea to its implementation in life, there are 35 days. But when you use the model of 3D printer, the ready product can be got in five days. How does it work for the 3D printer? It doesn't matter whether this is a mass production or one piece only. It gets the model and it gives you the ready product. So the process of the printing itself takes five hours only. All the rest is post-processing. So we can see that in the classic way of getting the prototype, we have 35 days, and when we use 3D printer, five hours only. So expanding this service, we began to work on the creation of our own device, our own printer. Thanks to the work with our own materials, we decided to equip it with the following set of our powders. This is the ceramic powder to produce ceramics. This is the powder with the glass sphere material to produce designer uh, materials and also the high temperature ceramics and the materials for the uh, metals casting. So, we need to understand which printer to use for it to be efficient and useful. So, thanks to producing printers, we are increasing our own service. Now, when we are developing the material, we are writing down all the components and the ingredients and all the tests we are conducting. The only complication is that when we are working with a highly technological and industrial enterprises, it's complicated to understand what, in fact, they need. So you have to come and to tell what we are doing and then to get the feedback, not to lose the links with the reality and to do what's needed at this very moment of the industry. During the previous year, we've loaded 13,000 objects and there was the shift of the whole business model. We decided to go away from the services only and decided to take the orders for the 3D printing, so we became the product company. But now we have new competitors, of course. As before that, we had only the companies who, which gave the services, provided the services of 3D printing, now we have the global producers of the 3D printers as competitors too. What shall we do with that? We'll be competitors and working on the technology of the printing itself, improving our own printer and being in the middle 
between those two big whales. If we look at the timeline of the last two years, we can see that in 2016, in September, two years sharp, uh, we uh, issued the plant on the processing of ceramics. We developed the materials and set up all the processes. So in January this year, at the World Exhibition of the Technology CS 2018, we showed our development, our printer, where we brought four first pre-orders. For the moment, the part of our team is working in Hartford, developing the drafts of using of our technologies in the industry. Those are corporations like General Electric, Stanley Black & Decker, Coca-Cola and others. And by the way, in a fortnight we are planning a very interesting event in London. We are opening the gallery and the represent representation, so we are office, so we are inviting you for this opening. Our closest plans are the development of the materials for the industry. We also have the plans of the developing of biopowders and also the expansion of our presence at the 3D printing market, the development of the desktop printer, which would allow you to use this technology not only by the huge industrial enterprises, but also SMEs. Here we can see how the future desktop printer will look like. And if five years ago there was the rumor that soon the 3D printer will be in each household, now I can say that the printer shouldn't be in every household. Every house must have an access towards such a technology. So if we have the special workshops which would give us such a technology, it would be much closer to us than the printer which is in each household. Household. A bit about uh, 3D printing, bioprinting. In the future, when each person has an account with his or her scan skeleton, will be ready to provide the service of the printing of the part what you need to print, the part of your body. It will allow the doctors having the set of the necessary bones to choose the proper way of treatment, to print out the necessary bone, to replace the injured one, and it won't be the implant which is totally strange for the body, but it will be the part which really used to be at the place. It will be the part of the fully functional organism of a person. During our existence, we had uh, raised several rounds of investments from different companies in Europe and the US, and we had the cross-functional team of the experts who are working now on what seemed impossible yesterday. Now they're working on what seems impossible tomorrow. So all of this time we were accompanied by media, of course. Those were addition, uh, additions from the Europe, from the US, and local media from Ukraine, which helped us to develop, inspiring us and showing that the work which we are conducting is interesting not only to us, but the users and wider audience. As for our geography, we are becoming an international company because now we have an office in New York. We've got a production capacity in Odessa where we develop the service, where we develop the devices and materials, and also we want to open an affiliate in London. We have certain expansions in the plans more and to have innovations in everyday life and to let them happen. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. And our final speaker, Andrei Zevrukov, is going to uh, explain to us how he's disrupting uh, the agricultural industry. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the last one. I'm trying not to be boring and telling long stories about technologies. But uh, I'm Andrei. I'm founder of AgriAI. And it's artificial based, uh, artificial intelligence based platform. And uh, the idea itself and the vision of the problem was transformed multiple times through our way to to the place where we are now. And it was started like in 2015 as an idea. And it was a simple idea to bring uh, revolutionary technology to agricultural sector, to rise in efficiency, to let Ukrainian farmers grow more with less cost. And uh, we came up with the idea of first, I get an information that FAO made a research and that was published in 2015 that Ukraine loses 50,000 hectares a year 
of fertile soil which will be never returned and uh, an amount of fertile land is decreasing. So we try to build a service which can measure the impact of this uh, decrease and uh, measure the state of the land and it was totally free and it's still free now all over the world. And uh, the thing I'm going to tell you is uh, our way, how we, how we started, how we moved, and how our vision transformed and where we, where we are now. So just imagine, uh, all the food that has been produced over the last 8,000 years, now the same amount to be reproduced in only 40 years to feed the amount of humans we have on the planet. And the number of humans is in increasing all the time, and I think in the prospects of the United Nations, on 2035 we'll have like 10 billion, something like that. So basically that daily food consumption is about this, it's about 2 kilograms per person. And that means that each day, the amount of food consumed is 13.4 million tons. Just imagine, the entire grain export of Ukraine is about like that, for a year, for one year. Uh, and so what, what happened is now? Uh, this data is taken from the uh, USDA researchers, and it indicates the amount of arable land available for each single person living on the planet. And as you might see, it's decreasing. So, Arable land per capita means how many land we have for one person. And then when you keep in mind that the land can produce limited amount of food, so basically if you just like, we'll try to remember some news you all will hear, then the average food production is about four tons per hectare, not more. Like it's, it's like that everywhere in the world. And uh, then the amount of land is decreasing due to natural uh, reasons like erosion, and uh, climate change and exhaustion because we don't use it in a lean way. We don't measure, we don't, uh, we don't apply new technologies and like only a few companies in Ukraine are really, really on the top edge of agricultural technology and the Arctic in Ukraine is not dead, as somebody told here, and it's not true. Uh, so this is the idea and uh, that we have to do something about it. And what the problem, like, if the land is limits the amount of food we can produce, and if the amount of humans is growing year to year, so what can we do about it? So we do realize that inserting more nutrition doesn't mean we get more yield, or providing more uh, land will, uh, does mean that we have to cut forest. And we cut all the forest, we don't have, we don't, we don't have any more oxygen to breathe. And then, when we produce a lot of the fertilizers, we also pollute the ecosystem with them. And the idea of AgriWai was to understand, to bring all this data to one place, to analyze it. So that's how we started. Uh, we created a platform aggregating the data from the satellites. And the data dips down in history for, for five years back for high resolution data. A Sentinel was launched like five years ago, and uh, for the low resolution, it goes more than 20 years back. That means that we have a huge amount of historical data we can analyze and we can see what was happening to the soil, what was growing there, and what is the result now, and how the state of the soil changed. So we can exactly calculate the amount of land lost forever, and we can see fields which we still can save using special technologies. And this is how the food industry will look like in uh, 2015. So 220 is like a modern state. And that's bringing understanding that the problem arising is not in the sphere of efficiency, it's in the sphere of redistribution, logistics, finance. So the entire, the entire problem is on the level of integration in between industries. And agriculture itself could never solve it because agriculture solves problem by putting more nutrition to the soil. So, and the idea of Agri now is to unite agriculture, with banking, with insurance, with transportation, with science, by providing access to the data and make it clear to those people. So basically now, if I'm the, like the sheep broker and I want to take the cargo and bring it from Ukraine to, some, for example, to Egypt, or somewhere like Mediterranean area, so I freight the sheep. Uh, and another side is a guy who is a trader, he's buying on the land. On the, uh, on the CPT basis in the port elevator. 
and he's going to sell somewhere on CIF, taking risks for transportation insurance on himself with a, like some surprise margin. So what happens, how, how, how it happened that all three guys meet in one place and the deal happens. So normally it takes six months, uh, several liters of vodka drinking during the conferences on great train. And what we are going to do is to show the data to all of these guys about one another. So they will have a very, very clear ecosystem where the farmer can sell his yield before he just planted it yet. So basically the idea is using the historical data from satellites and uh, prediction algorithms uh, by our artificial intelligence, we can say that this field will generate in the end of the year with this amount of risk, this amount of yield. So this is already approved information which can be used as a financial tool and then the bank can finance this farmer. Then he also can sell this yield in the uh, upfront because there is already an evidence that, the, that it, it exists. With this system, the, the way we build trust in, 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 a, in agriculture will increase like six times, I believe. And we launched uh, quite a small pilot project in Malaysia, like only 200 acres, with a not much known palm olive oil plantation, financed by Asia Development Bank, fully powered by di uh, distributed laser technology, which brings uh, entire communication between agriculture, insurance, finance, and transportation into one platform, powered by artificial intelligence. So experiment is success, we are scaling it up now, I'll see what happened next year. Uh, that's the sad stuff. So that's basically the, uh, what AgriAI is. So it's a uh, distributed ledger technology. And that's part of the business which is trust. The business is based on trust and sometimes the deal flows like half year long. That way too long for startup to survive through it. So basically some startups die in, in like six months. So can, how can we talk about B2B without the capacity to run through these six months when you get your first customer? So that's why DLT make it happen, make it faster. If it's proved, there is no reason not to trust. API connectivity. So that principle is for integration. If you want to share with, something, uh, so with somebody with something, or if you want to connect to something or use somebody's data, you have to be understandable for those one. If people don't understand you, you cannot connect to them. And it works way back, actually. If you don't understand person, you cannot connect to him. So that's how it works. And artificial intelligence. All connections we generate will produce a huge amount of data. And not, I don't, I don't think a human mind exists which can process all that amount of data. That's why artificial intelligence is a universal tool to process huge amount of data and get use out of it. And when you process the data, there are like several technologies what you do with it actually. You, that is a logistics for the data, that is a storage for the data, processing for the data, and the processing is the main part. All these problems were solved using Microsoft Azure, actually. Yeah, so this is our scale. So when you speak about the startup, so is scale. We started in Ukraine, but our first customer was in, in the United States. So the startups go where money are to survive. Then we started Ecuador and Peru. There was perfect experiments. Yeah, I, I never believed before that they can find an advanced agricultural company in, in, in the north of Peru. It's just by the border of Ecuador. It's one of the most advanced agricultural companies I saw in my life. Their name is Agricasa, like one and a half thousand hectares of uh, electronically grown trees of mango and avocado. Uh, then we moved to Oslo and finally this year we started in Ukraine. And uh, I, I'm really proud that the things are moving on and our first platform which we connected with an OTP bank and Agrofabrica Agra program which allowed us to screen the customer. So basically the farmer comes to the bank and says like, uh, okay, I want to finance my processes. The bank asks him, do you have land? No, I don't have it. It's Ukraine. We cannot have our land. <laughs> okay, but what, what will you have? Do you have any value? Uh, the farmer says, yeah, uh, I will have yield in six months. Bank say, oh, everybody says like the table have in six months. I will give you nothing. But what happens with Agriai? We just insert the border of the field. And the bank sees that there's something is growing there. You see the vegetation cycle and how it puts progress into the, to the time. And that makes bank to believe and he will finance him. So basically now Agriai is, uh, I think, more than two million hectares in monitoring all around the world. Uh, that's boring stuff about the technology, uh, spectral analytics. Uh, I, I will skip this, just uh, I'm not sure it's useful. 
Okay. So basically, that's a, the idea of ecosystem. When all the stakeholders of ecosystem are integrated in a, in a circle which doesn't break, the data travels through all the circle, that means the industry is integrated. When you have the break in a data flow, that means that one part don't know something about other part, and it gives a mistrust. When the data is flowing just all around the globe, it's good, it's okay, so it works. Uh, so basically, that's the idea. Uh, what what impact it will make actually? So that's six times faster deal closing, because that there is no there is no need to wait on you to get the trust of the person for six months anymore. And it's thirty percent economy in resources. So basically, we spend our resources. It's not only like fertilizers, water. It's also our time. So six months of our time is, was just saved. And up to 100% more efficiency. And uh, I know that somebody knows what Arctic is and how you can raise efficiency of the farming. Uh, of the farming, uh, and somebody will say like, yeah, okay, precision farming in like five to 10%. No, it's not about precision farming. It's about when you have communication. The farmer in uh, Bangladesh, let's say for example, he has a small amount of arable land which he uh, does with his hands and shovel. And it takes for him two months to process all the land with his shovel. And he will never get money to buy a small, like $5,000 tractor. When he buys a small $5,000 tractor, when he is financed by the bank, because his, uh, his field and his yield is proved by AgriAI, he will buy this tractor and will do the field in two days. Then he will have one month free to educate himself. That's how it comes to 100% efficiency. An educated farmer is he's more lean, he's more successful. And how it works? Less risks and more transparency. Oh, that's our friends. So basically, AgriAI is a company which, will ne which till now, never raised uh, uh, venture capital. We, did, we, we never did. We never did a PR campaign. And uh, we did two acceleration programs. So the first one was Startup Capital in New York, and the other one was a Catapult Impact Accelerator in Oslo, in Norway. And uh, we have great scientific partnerships as NASA, as uh, European Space Agency, University of Missouri, our scientific partner. We are good friends of American Ministry of Agriculture and Food, it's USDA. Uh, and some more. Uh, they just have the best logo. So basically, uh, that's all what I can say about AI. And uh, what we do, our mission is to help farmers to feed the world. And if you like, join. We like like minders. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, Andre, and I would like to thank uh, all of our, uh, our startup founders and CEOs for taking time out of their busy schedules, building their companies, uh, to join us here today. So thank you one more time uh, to all of you. And thanks to you, the brave audience who is still here on the last session of the day. I believe there are some, some details coming about the after party, so I'm going to turn it over to our gracious host.